Hi and welcome to John Maddox on Anderton's TV. I'm Tobes and this is Dave Grohl's Doppelganger and we are talking today about this beautiful Sakai um, kit which is a Pack D. It's a very small compact little kit. It's quite cool. They, I, I was quite surprised at the sound when I first played it that it, it just projects and it's quite a big sound isn't Fantastic it? Fantastic finish. Yes. Really lovely. It's the... Uh, and it comes in tobacco as well, you were saying. Yeah, tobacco is my favourite. They, they do like six colours. There's a bright blue and a bright orange. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this these sort of fades, they do like a red, a green, and then a tobacco. Tobacco is my favourite. Really nice. And in fact, when we were setting it up earlier, um, the, you were, we made a classic mistake, which I was commenting about the finish, that Tom wasn't quite set. It was green fading into uh, the um, satin burst, is that? Or tobacco burst? What is that, that colour? What is this colour? Yellow. Yellow, that'll do. <laughs> anyway. Um, Sakai uniquely, and it was new to me actually because I'm not that familiar with Sakai, the um, Tom mount is at the bottom of the Tom. Yes, so as you can see the badge is the right way up and the colour is the right way up, yep. but the um, hoop mounted uh, Tom mount is actually at the bottom. So it doesn't disturb the head you're playing. That's the, the it's a really theory nice touch, behind it. Because when I set the kit up, obviously being the fool that I am, I set it up in a traditional way and then was commenting how bad that the uh, Tom was uh, colours are flowing the wrong way until Rob And you couldn't see the badge. That's right, until Rob kindly pointed out to me that actually setting up the Sakai it sits that way. Which is really lovely. I've not seen that before. It works really well um, and it does um, make a difference. It's lovely. Also, as you can see, if you take that one back off tapes. Oh, gosh. This is the little snare drum that come with it. Now, this is a little cannon. Uh, we cranked it up because we instantly thought drum and bass stroke side snare because it's only a 12. Stereotypes. Well, there was lots of stereotypes. Um, but this, as you can see from Toby's playing, cranked up. This just sounded great. Yeah. I'd have this as a side snare, it's great. So this 16 inch bass drum, which is really, really lovely, comes with a fantastic little riser. Yeah. Um, so that it sits cleanly um, and the bass pedal can mount quite easily and simply. Um, displayed by my glamorous assistant here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not, a, it's not a little traditional riser where you just click the pedal on. It's a whole cradle. So the drum literally sits on the four rubber sort of uh, posts and mm -hmm. you can adjust where you want your pedal yeah. what height you want the posts, whether you want the spikes out the bottom, and then pedal clips on here. And the other really cool thing, which if I take the toms off, you want to whack that tom on there? You grab the bass drum out. It's quite dominant, isn't it? Okay. The other really cool thing is, when you flip it over, there's a hole in the hoop. So that way up, the pedal, the chain and the upright of the pedal and the beta doesn't hit the hoop. So when this is sat on the cradle. Do you want me to help you, dear? I know if I do it on the floor, camera can't see it, so. Okay. Like that. So the pedal hits in the middle because of the riser and the chain doesn't hit the hoop. So very clever little uh, Very clever. And you, it's fully adjustable, so don't, don't be impatient with it when you get it and go, oh, I can't get it quite right. It's completely adjustable. Which is can, what I did. Yeah. Yep. Very easily done, obviously, Tobes. Lovely. Always good to have a hole in your hoop. So this kit comes in various different setups. We've just got the one up, one down with the snare, but it comes with and without hardware, two up, one down, various different colours. So you really can tailor it to what you want, really. And also you can sort of go, right, I want the, the one up version, but I want it without hardware and put mm -hmm. your own hardware with it. It'll still come with a riser. Yeah, it's a fantastic package, um, budget-wise as well. It's not super expensive, but it is an all mahogany shell. So sometimes mm. the smaller kits, people make a preconceived sort of, oh, they're cheaper. Yep. This, this is a fully workable kit. Yep. It's just of a smaller size. So as you've shown when you watch out, watch all of Toby's playing, we did loads of different styles on this. Yeah. No absolutely. stereotyping at all. No stereotyping.
the punch really with the little bass drums because there's less air in them physically a bigger bass drum has more end moving between the two heads this is just smaller so the physics of it there's less air in it you're not going to get quite as bassy boomier mm -hmm. note but this is actually quite punchy isn't it so, it's good yeah there used to be a drummer called paul clavis who sorry there is a drummer a percussionist called paul clavis one of the greatest percussionists in the country and whenever i used to see him playing at the festival hall and places like that this is going back years and years ago he always used to have a floor tom turned on its sides on its side using it as a bass uh, bass drum all those years ago before it became very very fashionable or before it became accessible in this kind of format as well well yeah with the cradle because it's not actually on the floor and there's less mm -hmm. of the drum restricted on the floor you get actually quite a whole bodied note so yeah you do because it, you tend to put less muffling in there as well yeah from a stereotype point of view and also the beat is hitting in the middle of the drum rather yeah. than really high up on it so yep. you're getting a, a clearer note too so yep. yeah it's, it's a well designed cool little package obviously if you don't know the whole Sakai story they've they're they're sort of 90 odd years old and they've been making drums Really? Lots of other brands, shall we say. Other brands, indeed. Other brands. Okay, so, okay. Um, but they're very good at making drums, so. Hardware's cool, triple fan tubes, nice chunky but smooth lugs, it's all well chrome plated. Mm -hmm. It's quite a cool little kit actually. I've got some great players uh, using it now, it's become quite a forefront um, kit isn't it? Sakai, the brand has now become a lot more commercial. commercial yeah, loads, and, uh, of, loads of British artists are playing yeah. them so, and if you're Danish Pete you, you want to buy one because they're cool. Okay, so we hope you've enjoyed listening to this fantastic Sakai Pack D kit today. Um, it's been a real pleasure to play. Um, we'd love to know what you think, um, as always. Um, so yeah, that's been Drum Addicts on Anderton's TV. I've been Tobes. As I said, this is uh, Grohl's doppel Doppelganger. And we will see you next time. And if you're up for a giggle, um, check out my dep, uh, Dutch Pete, having a play on this <laughs> kit as well, which you will very much enjoy.